तो काम करो not sure where the main event but i will jump in uh, i think she must have issues with her internet but what she was to present was a bit of what is this global youth forum animal so global youth forum is a community based organization whose main aim is to end youth unemployment in africa but we are focusing in kenya for now so our major departments include the agribusiness, civic education, outdoor and young leaders. And the vision we aim to have by say 2050, it can be even earlier, we want to build a self-sustaining community sports center that will help nurture the talents of the young people in the community. And that's our vision. And if you look at this young person, so we aim to serve young people between the ages of 16 to 35. And the pain they go through, these young people, they got skills. And they are wondering how can they use their, the skills they have to engage uh, the employer and also to learn new skills and in return also have some capital despite the lack of employment. So that is the pain that the person we are looking to serve undergoes through, like undergoes. So that therefore sums everything as to why we are here today, what we are looking to do, um, what we've been working on, and now that brings us to the 2020 awards. So I must have stepped in the CEO's shoes, and now we jump down to the icebreaker. So for the icebreaker, I'd love if each of us could turn their cameras on so I see people. Because sometimes we have these meetings and people go hiding, so you don't know actually who is in the room. So it is time to realize who is in. So here is the, I'm going to show you because some of us can, um, I will share my screen again with you to see. So that is the song we are going to sing. So if you guys can see me, I want you to do that so I can see people. Just do that for me. We will do this for a minute. So we warm up. So this is how the song will go. Concentration is the game. Listen and learn if you can. Concentration is the game. Listen and learn if you can. Concentration is the game. Listen and learn. Concentration is the game. Listen and learn if you can. Concentration. So I want to hear you guys sing. So unmute and sing. Just unmute. Let's cause chaos. And I will be watching who is not singing. So off we go. So I can see the patron is in the house. Concentration if you can. Concentration is the game. Concentration if you can. Concentration is the game. Okay, stop. Stop. But some of us are not musicians. So we got to do it again. I want to see everyone do that and that, that and that, until we get the full noise. Off we go. All right, let's go. Concentration is the game. Listen the and game. learn if you can. Concentration is the game. Listen and learn. Concentration is the game. Listen and learn if you can. Concentration is the game. Listen and learn if you can. Concentration is the game. Listen and learn if you can. Concentration is the game. Listen if. Okay. Now calm down. Calm down. Calm down. So basically, that's the entire theme. So we got to listen, and we all aim to learn from each other. I know I got experts in the house. All everyone here got a skill that he or she is aiming to share with some of us. So you are not just here to listen and, and just do, yeah. do stuff. So let's jump to the introduction part. My eyes will be on the chat box. I got two balls there. That is a FIFA ball, and this is a homemade ball. For those who love football, you know where people start playing that football. So I want you to tell me, between those two balls, which one is the most expensive? Go on the chat box. 
either A or B and Y. Rogers, can you time me, please? Today we do that for two minutes. So I will be picking people from the chat box and they will be able to tell us which ball is expensive. Ball B. Ahmed, ball B. Keep them coming on the chat box so I see. Moti says ball A. So I will, I will jump to Moti. Moti, can you just show your screen and tell us why you picked ball A? Tapiwa also is saying ball A, Betty ball B. So let me go to Moti first. Moti, just unmute and tell us why. Because it requires a lot of material. Where is Moti? Did I see Moti? Amina. John. John, I will allow John, I will not allow you now yet. But I want Kieron says B, Valdivia B. Let me jump to Tapiwa. Tapiwa, because you are the one unique one with the ball. <laughs> Just tell us which ball. Why? I why? Think, uh, I think A homemade ball. Um it's a, it's a commitment by communities, by people to put that thing into shape. Uh, this FIFA ball, I see commercial interest, I see interest in it. But that ball, I see community shared space to do something together. Uh, when I grew up, you know, we used to do this kind of thing and play this thing and it helped social cohesion, it helped to bring us together. So I think I value this. It connects me with my people, with my community, my neighborhood, my everything. That's why I think A is more valuable. Good. Thanks so much, Tapiwa. Let me go to Betty. Betty, why did you pick ball B? Uh, I think ball B is somehow expensive as compared to... Sorry, I was muted. Like, as for ball B, you need some, some funds to buy. But as for ball, ball A, it's like you have some resources in the community to make them. So at least those ones, you may get them for so ball B, you need some funds to get it. Thanks so much. Let me jump to, welcome, Daktari. I know you are meeting, you are meeting few people after several years. So this is a, a, good, a good discussion. So let me get, Moti, I'm still keen to hear you are saying because you chose ball A. Moti, can we hear you? Why did you choose ball A? Okay. I think we can't hear her. Let me go to John. John, Prof, come tell us why you chose ball A then. Because I know you know the origin, where we are coming from. John is also, John. Prof, are you going to tell us? Unmute if you want. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hello. So the reason as to why I chose ball A is number one, the skills required to make that ball. They are high compared to the ones that are used to make ball B. And most importantly, ball B is, uh, I truly believe is uh, machine, machine made. While you know, ball A is hand made. Another thing is that ball uh, A is composed of several materials. You can see some strings. Uh, we need some polythene and other materials. I truly believe a variety of them that are, that are inside. While ball, ball, ball B is composed, if I get some, you know, leather and, you know, inside it, uh, some tubes and so on. So basically to me, I truly believe ball A is expensive in comparison to ball B. Yeah. Good. So let me let me give you a tip uh, because I'm <laughs> I happen I happen to be the one who made that ball. 
That ball A, I sold that ball at 7,200. And ball B, ball B is, for, when we bought it, it was 4,500 in terms of money. So I will encourage you to listen to what Tapiwa said and connect a story behind something is always powerful than when you just like, have you had this thing on all that glitters is not gold? So you go home and just think about that. And ball A is really expensive, if you see what I mean. So jumping on to why we are here, at Global Youth Forum, we set annual goals and we work with volunteers, purely volunteers, people who are not paid to do stuff. We set these goals and we work with them to achieve those goals. And our 2020 goal, we had five key goals. We wanted to raise 100,000 to establish ourselves as a sustaining community sports center. We wanted to empower 366 young people with life skills. We wanted to scale up our existing agribusiness department. We also wanted to produce 50 civic educators. And we can't al always do this without community leaders. So our aim was to produce 15 community leaders. So as a team, we've done a number of things. We've, do we've done a number of things in relation to these goals. By the end of this presentation, you will have heard from people who help us work on these goals and what we've managed to achieve as a team. So with that, I will welcome our volunteer, who is Rogers Kemutai. Rogers happens also to be our young leader this year. So he just graduated from the university with um, BBIT. So he's going to make a presentation at the angle on, like, of a volunteer. What has he gone through? What have he achieved? What challenges did he uh, encounter? And what, what, what's the future like for him? So I welcome Rogers to at least pick the podium and tell us what he has gone through. So Rogers, over to you. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, okay, uh, I'm Rogers, Rogers Kintai, just as Peter said that I just completed uh, my degree program doing business information and technology. Uh, and also I'm a volunteer at Global Youth Forum. And just because of time, I'll just dive in very quickly uh, to, what, uh, to how the volunteer program 2020 has been. Uh, and I'll just start at the beginning and just how the program started and uh, what, we, what was expected of us. Uh, okay, so uh, Global Youth Forum always starts with planning. We have to plan uh, before, we have to plan anything before we move forward. And uh, the program, uh, volu the volunteer program 2020 started with a lot of planning. Uh, 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 first, uh, the, uh, we had uh, volunteers for, uh, for 2020. And uh, we, uh, we start by setting our goals and we had the individual goals and the organizational goals. Uh, the individual goals, uh, we set them so that uh, we, can, we can keep our volunteers in check uh, so that uh, to whatever goals they set, we'll, uh, we'll be able to assess them to what they've achieved at the end of the year. Uh, and also the individual goals are set to also help uh, when coming up with organizational goals. Uh, okay, so uh, we set the, indi uh, the individual and organizational goals. Then we came up with uh, ideas on how we can achieve those goals. Uh, this is a contribution from all volunteers. And, and uh, these ideas uh, help, uh, help us to know how we can be able to achieve uh, our goals. And... and, uh, and uh, and having these uh, ideas, we, uh, we we now come up to our actions. How do we? How do? How how can we able to to? How can we able to achieve these goals? So we were able to take a, uh, the next part is taking action. So 
then uh, we were able to dive in to some of, uh, some of the events that we set. And I'll just take you through some of these events that we had during the program. And the first session we had uh, in January was uh, team building. We had a team building uh, session. Uh, this was just, we had some new volunteers coming in and we had to know each other and all that. And also this was, a, this was a, uh, an event uh, to know what, uh, what uh, each volunteer's strengths and weaknesses are. And uh, I think it was, a, uh, it was a very fruitful event. And we, uh, we, were, able to, we were able to bond very well through those, the team building games. And we were able to acquire some, uh, some skills uh, such as uh, teamwork, communication skills, uh, critical thinking, and, and these skills are very, are very important towards uh, moving forward with our volunteer program because uh, we, are able to, we are able to shift these skills to the real world applications and also in our volunteering work. Uh, the, next, uh, the next event that we had was uh, Charity Car Wash. Uh, we planned for a Charity Car Wash. Uh, this was, our aim was to come up with uh, some funds for a community sports center, which is a long-term project. And uh, our target was to raise 5,000 shillings. And uh, I think we did very well. We were able to raise 6,050 uh, Kenya shillings. And, what, and our aim for this, uh, apart from the community sports center, we, we, we wanted to, uh, show the youth that whenever they come up together in a team and work together, uh, they can be able to uh, they can be able to uh, achieve a lot. And also, uh, in appreciation of every work, any work that you take up with a passion, uh, you can be able to achieve a lot in that. So we wanted to show the youth that they can take up any work with passion, and they can be able to achieve a lot. Uh, okay, our, our third event was to, uh, was to be a, a virtual uh, wo uh, 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 workshop, but uh, we were not able to have it because of the COVID-19 uh, situation. Uh, we went under lockdown and uh, now from there we had another phase of our volunteering program where we shifted to uh, the online volunteering and uh, our events now became uh, online and we had uh, we had some online educational challenges and uh, such as the civic education program uh, uh, whereby we were edu educating uh, young uh, uh, young youth out there to register and and for the program so that they can be able to acquire some civic education and uh, later they can be able to educate their their communities uh, we also had the life skills challenge uh, this one was meant for the youth so that they, uh, they can be able to, to acquire uh, some life skills. Uh, and uh, as you can see uh, uh, from the slides. Uh, the third, we had the leadership, the, the leadership challenge. Uh, this one was to, as, uh, this one was to equip our young, our youth with leadership skills. As we, uh, we all know that there are many youths out there who, with leadership capabilities. Uh, but uh, they don't have the right skills, and also uh, and also wanted to keep them with uh, with a mentality of a positive leadership, because you uh, you can be yes a, a leader, but uh, you you portray some negative leadership. Uh, okay, and we, uh, last uh, uh, challenge we had was the GY, uh, GYF uh, business startup challenge, where we were keeping youth with uh, entrepreneurial skills and. Uh, where they can be able to start uh, start up their own businesses. Yeah, moving forward, uh, we had the virtual virtual in uh, influencer series. This was uh, 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 this was uh, this uh, also an online an online program that we had, whereby we uh, we used uh, the digital platforms such as Zoom to to engage our youth uh, in various uh, uh, skills. For, uh, for example, we had the effective communication uh, virtual series, uh, educating the youth on how they can, they can communicate effectively in their, in their environments. We, we had the critical thinking and leadership 
negotiation uh, and the uh, and team building okay so uh i'll just i'll just give a a, a brief review of how our, our volunteers uh, are fed during the the program okay joining the program we had 31 volunteers coming uh registering for the for the program and yes you have three more minutes okay thank you peter we had 31 volunteers coming in and do, uh, at the end of the program right now we only we, we only have six who managed to reach the end of the program so we had some some of our volunteers are dropping out of the program and uh, that was a concern for us but as uh, uh, what i can say is that as you enter into something uh, that you know you're passionate about you know uh, this you have a reason for entering uh, for, for entering uh, that uh, uh, that program so i believe that even if things get uh, tough you are able to because uh, globally forum is a platform where we are, we are able to learn from one another so uh, it is a platform where you uh, you are uh, you are allowed to fail uh, you are allowed to make mistakes but we learn from one another we learn from our mistakes so uh, dropping out from uh, such beneficial programs is not always a solution so i, I just encourage that uh, even for the upcoming uh, program for 2021 i just encourage that uh, we should we, we should always stick to the uh, to the end because there's something beneficial out of it. Uh, okay, I'll just go to some of the lessons that we learned uh, th uh, from the program. Uh, the first, uh, the first lesson that I will, I'll, I'll just go, I'll just mention, which it's a main lesson that I learned. Uh, that through a small committed team, we can be able to achieve a lot, uh, uh, more than a large crowd that. Uh, with no action, and I and for the six volunteers who stayed till the end, I, uh, you can as you can see, uh, they are the reason as to why we are here right now. And I just like to thank them for staying and persevering till the end. Then we had uh, lessons. Uh, the other lesson was the di uh, uh, digital and technological skills. Moving into the Moving into the online volunteering, we lost some volunteers because uh, 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 they were not ready to for the change. Some of the vol uh, some volunteers uh, uh, did not have the digital skills, and uh, we are sorry, but we just we just ten seconds. We just had to drop out. Okay, so uh, the other lessons we had were teamwork. When you work together, you can be able to achieve a lot. And consistency just as i have mentioned and others were hard work honesty and dedication uh just on just finishing up uh maybe some of the challenges were just like as i've said uh, transformation from uh, the uh, the physical to the online volunteering uh okay just moving forward i'd just like to recommend that uh that uh, globally forum goals are are, are aligned together with the sustainable development goals and moving forward to 2021 and also our decade of action we would like to have uh, a lot a lot of volunteers coming in and and not only we want them to just come and fill these spaces but we want them to be to be action takers and not just talkers and and i believe that we will will move forward well okay thank you I hope I've not taken much of the time. Not just you, you have taken much of the time, so well done. So that's how we will be clapping, guys. So that's how we clap. So if somebody says something nice, yeah, I see Dr. is struggling. <laughs> the mini will teach you, Dr. So that's how we will be clapping, okay? So thanks so much, uh, Rogers. So Rogers have, have mentioned how we managed to pivot from our on ground to off ground. So. I will allow Damini to jump in and now tell us how the executive team performed. Damini, over to you. Thank you so much, Peter. 
Uh, firstly, I apologize for the network issue that I'm having today, but hopefully I'm going to be able to work out. So this 2020 was a bit of a different year for me as I was given the position of the CEO, a very big chair to handle this year. So we always like blame the leaders that the leaders are not doing what we want them to do as the public. But when you step in that leadership position is when you realize what actually goes through behind them. So I'll always like wish to learn more as a leader and to gain more skills. So come with my CEO position in 2020 came the COVID-19, which we had to change the plan that we had set up in December before we start the year. So COVID-19 came and as Roger told her, we had to change from physical to online. So we had to come up with new strategies to meet our 2020 goals as we didn't want to like blame COVID not to achieve our goals. So we came up with the help of Peter, we came up with some online challenges, civic education, young leaders, life skills and business challenges so that at least we could train the youth and also achieve our 2020 set goals. Coming to talking about my exec team, uh, just be before I continue, uh, Valdivia who is there with us, I'll give her two minutes after my presentation to share her experience as the organizing secretary of Global Youth Forum. So I'll leave here after my speech, get ready. 2020, we had, we lost two exec. Valdivia was one of them. And we had another exec by the name Egbe who joined in 2020. So Valdivia, we ended her contract in, 20, in October due to her performance. We were not happy with her performance. So we had to terminate her contract. Uh, as for Egbe, she joined as the Secretary General in 2020. But you know the youths want to do so many things and they don't have a focused goal what they want to achieve. So within a few weeks, Egbe submitted her resignation letter, which was a bit shocking because she was very hardworking, but she said that she wants to pursue her studies, which is good. But before, uh, just to let the youth know that before you take any step, get to know what your goal is, what you want to achieve and stay focused on it. Don't jump to things and then within a few days or within a few months, you just uh, leave. So we had Egbe, who also started a social uh, ambassadors for GYF, but eventually resigned and left that job uncompleted. So for the youth, stay focused, have a, have a great mindset and a set goal on what you want to achieve. And position comes with responsibilities. So when you apply for positions, especially big positions as executive members, make sure you know what comes and what work you need to do. Coming to Peter, he's very hardworking. As you can all see we are here because of him. So I'm, all, I'm glad to have met him sometime in 2015 and each day I learn from him. So thank you so much, Peter. All in all for the youth, I just want to say, stay focused and committed in all you do. Volunteering work is not easy, but it's amazing and it gives you lots of experience. So keep volunteering and keep working hard. Thank you. So Val, over to you. Val, jump on. Defend yourself, Val. Um, hi to, to everyone who's uh, around today. Um, there's no defending myself. Uh, I think um, I was guilty of, of actually not performing very effectively. Um, I think for me personally, this year has not been a very uh, good year. But in terms of my performance, I do agree that um, it wasn't as up to par. Even, even to myself, I didn't think I performed to the best. But I do want to thank um, the organization's executive for also giving me the opportunity to serve and to learn because I've been able to see where my weaknesses are, be able to see where the strengths are. So I think um, in terms of maybe my role, I think at another time, I would be able to apply when I feel I can actually deliver to the standard of the organization. But as the, at the moment, I feel like it was a good choice, you know, um, having to also work with you guys and learn. So I don't think I'll defend myself as I'm guilty, but I do apologize for not, you know, being the best at what I should have done. But also thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. 
can we give Val some of that? We, we have very few leaders who do that. So that's why we wanted to have Val. By the way, Val, Val is our 2021 volunteer. So although we, we terminated the contract, but she said, well, I still got to be in the league and I got to play. So thanks so much for you and Tamin uh, for sharing that with us. So jumping down, um, down to, I'm the one to make the presentation on behalf of my board. And I'm glad my patron, my patron is in the house, so, and basically my bosses are in the house, if you see what I mean. So my, what I mean with my bosses, that they are like a number of things, uh, they are like a number of ways of looking at it. I want to be, they say, I want to be candid, and I will say this year I was not very impressed with my board, and actually, actually if you just give me that if you, you think I'm speaking some sense. So this year I was not so pleased with my board uh, due to a number of reasons. So what happens, just like we set goals as young people, and Rogers mentioned that, we also, once we set goals as young people, then we invite our board to also look at the goals and tell us what they will be able to, to, to like help us with. So they also make their commitments and say, look, we will help you do this, we'll help you do this, and we'll help you do that. So in our board, we have seven board members. And I will say I only have three active ones. So probably that's a bigger percentage, if you see what I mean. Three out of seven, that is, that is overwhelming. So I will say with my board, uh, with, uh, with the team I had, I feel like they didn't help us push so hard and we can't blame all of them, prob probably because of COVID-19, tough situations and all that. But I feel like they, they would have done um, like a better job. Like let's say, for example, if we ask as young people, we know what we want. And when we design our own goals, then we only ask for guidance and probably chipping in and we needed to see more of that. So when pitching on my, on behalf of my board, let me say the patron is here. If patron wasn't there, I will be somewhere in the middle of an ocean. In fact, even today he did send me a message asking if I have food. <laughs> so you know who now, who now looks after me because I do not have a job as an individual. I don't have a job. What I do is pure volunteer, but I have to eat. I got to plan Zooms for you. I got to do a number of things. So my patron who is there looks after me. And Amini also who is there looks after me. Kieran also is somewhere up there says, oh, Mondi, uh, we got to get this one sorted. So I got a number of people who look after me. But this is an angle that I really wanted to look in terms of um, uh, the board members when looking at the adults and the, the young people. I feel like there is, for example, I will say, if we want to help young people, but we are so busy, we don't have time for them. How will they be able to get the guidance and the support they need to achieve what they want? Mm. So looking at my board, my aim, and uh, as I end this speech in terms of my board, I was just thinking, how can we get more of adult commitment to young people? Like, let's say we are more big organizations or small, we are more into the structures, look at the email for us, we can do WhatsApp, we can do Facebook, but how about making the systems a little bit simple so that we cope and help these young people achieve their goals as much as they want. So on behalf of the board, I will allow my patron to dive in and give us the situation. He is the patron of Global Youth Forum. I've spoken my part, I will allow him also to jump in and defend his team or himself. So, Dr. over to you. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Jolly good. Um, I'll, I'll use the phrase that Valdivia just used and, and say that the, there is no defense in the sense that it doesn't matter what, what age you are, what nationality you are, it doesn't matter where you live. Your word is your bond or not. And I don't think there is any, any shortcoming on 
the part of the way in which GYS is promoted, very, very clear objectives, very, very clear communications, good advanced planning. And so there's no excuse for those who volunteer to come and sit on the board of trustees if they are then giving half or, or quarter measures. I, I think that, that, that's a fair thing to say. And I can understand the frustration um, that, that you have. And, and, and certainly one of the things that, that, that ought to be a core objective in the first quarter of 2021, I think, is to look at a, a complete overhaul of, of the board, which needs to be composed of people who really are willing to give that proactive commitment, you know, uh, with a contemporary knowledge base of not only the diversity of, 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 of communication media that are being used, but also in terms of their commitment to the youth um, as far as empowerment is, is, is concerned. So I think at this stage, because there are some remarks I want to make um, when I, in my official slot at the end, but I think in responding to you, you have a legitimate concern. Um, the board does need to do better. I think the board needs um, a fresh mandate. It needs fresh blood, um, but a very clear understanding that once you commit yourself, then it is the board's responsibility, not just to support, but to give um, an evident example to the youth that you're going to achieve things by action and not by talking. Thank you, Peter. Thanks so much, Patron. So how we thrive, and Damini will say, can we give Patron some of that? Damini, take, take a selfie, please. So we give Patron that. <laughs> so we show we show some some love to patron. So thanks so much, patron. If the societies and the charities and all organizations can just be so transparent and say, look, we didn't get this right. I messed about here. I really need to correct things. I'm telling you, it can only take us two days to change the world. But probably we we got to think about that. So jumping down to um, to the other side of the presentation. I think we are going to look at the corporate and we were to, we were to have a corporate partner who was to come in uh, to give us this presentation. But this is how it works at Global Youth Forum. Every single year, obviously we can't do alone. Uh, we can't do these things alone. We rely on partners and people to come in. So last year we had Barclays Bank, uh, now known as APSA, popped in to give us a hand. So this year, our corporate partner of the year happens to be the Exponential. And they did a number of things uh, in relation to what we, we were doing. So we will be telling you what they did. So, Daminia will allow you to give this report. Jump on because you missed the first part. So jump on and share with us how we, we fared on, on these particular goals. Okay. So we, at the beginning of the year, before we start our work, actually, we usually set goals based on five thematic areas. One being the agribusiness part or the entrepreneurship part, life skills, um, our aim, our long-term goal, which is to build a community sports center. So we usually need funds or raising funds for that, civic education and young leaders. So this 2020 also we set some goals the first one being raising 100,000 for the community sports center. And we managed to raise 41,876,000 through various donations from uh, our partners, uh, individuals, as well as our activities. So we raised funds through the activities and the online trainings. So we managed to raise 41,876. Uh, the second goal, empowering 366 youth with life skills. We managed to get 229 youths despite COVID-19. So I think that was a good achievement. Uh, scaling up business, every business specific. So we had to invest 100,000. So currently 
uh, we have invested 99,606. So we're still working to improve on uh, that business part as well as getting more youth to work in our IT business department. Production of 50 civic educators through our online challenges, which we had three uh, cohort, three cohorts of the online civic education challenge. We managed to get 11 youth to fully take part in the challenge and even complete the challenge. So they become our civic educators for the year. Production of 15 community young leaders, we had 11 youth. So this was also through the virtual trainings that we conducted, as well as some of our volunteers who gave their best uh, and performed well during the year. So, so they become our young leaders. Yeah. So thanks so much, Damini, for that. Um, you can clearly see how we performed. And by, the, by setting goals, you can clearly see what we, we managed to do. So just looking back into 2019 and what we managed to do in 2019. In 2019, we were to empower 625 young people with life skills. So we went beyond 100% and did 827. Uh, that is the number of people, young people we empowered. So community young leaders, we did manage to produce 11. So for the, agri uh, for the business opportunities, we created four. And then the civic, because it was, we could go out in the field and do a number of things, we managed 58. And looking at the financial status, this is now where I know that many will be smiling all the way to the bank that this year we did manage to at least beat the target. Although we will share with you how that works. Look at how much we've managed to raise due to the pandemic and what we had last year. There is a big, we had a big goal, but we did small. But this time we had a small goal, but we did work extra hard. So before I start welcoming my guest, I know there is a volunteer who was so active and is the last one who we, we kicked out, probably we terminated the contract. And that is Professor, Professor John Mutuku. So I will welcome Prof to give us just two minutes and he will represent volunteers who went out because of a number of reason, reasons. So John, jump on and give us your statement. And mute if you want. Can you hear me? Yes. Munanisikia? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, Sawa. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank the organizers of this wonderful uh, uh, session. Uh, I was kicked out. I wasn't expected, expecting to be kicked out. You know, you can't run all the way from January and be kicked out in, you know, towards the end of the year. That was, that was not a good experience. But basically what I can say is that uh, it was tough. It was tough. But then the rewards that came along, you know, with connecting or rather bonding with, uh, you know, fellow volunteers and you, our leaders is that uh, it created an opportunity for us to learn things that we never knew before, uh, as you know, not being volunteers or being members of the general public. So my, my word is that if you want to serve in GYF, you, gotta, you need to be a serious folk. Otherwise, uh, the system doesn't tolerate uh, mediocres. Uh, you mess around and you are removed from the group. A slight mistake, you are out of the group. Uh, so I will say that for the guys, you know, uh, in the system and the guys who, you know, manage to end, uh, you know, well as volunteers, the likes of Rogers and others, the likes of Damini who kicks people out of the group with no apology. I will say uh, that was, uh, you know, a tremendous uh, performance. It's tough. The likes of Damini, Damini works, and I know the nature of her job is that, that which actually demands a lot. But then she will always be active. Be active, you know, in ensuring that she delivers as a leader, and as well as, you know, kicking people out of the group and disciplining people. So <laughs> I really loved, I really loved uh, being in DOF, but uh, I hope you guys understand that uh, during the beginning of this particular year, uh, uh, you know, lockdown, I was at home, and the reason as to why I was very active, but then when we uh, got used to COVID and we had again to work 
regardless of what was happening. So returning back to work, a lot of commitments, always leaving work very tired. Uh, so to some extent, I must admit I became lazy. I became lazy and I was punished ruthlessly. You know, being eliminated uh, from a race that you wanted to complete and get something, you know, in form of, you know, feeling that goodness that comes along after, you know, doing something that is wonderful for the society. Ain't a good feeling. So the other volunteers that were kicked out, you guys need to get back and not, don't be lazy. I think, I think you, <laughs> you guys really kicked me out without even notifying me that you kicked me out. Anyway, I will say that uh, GOF is a wonderful place for people to learn things. And congratulations to uh, Rogers. Rogers and the other ladies, Vid, Vid, something of that sort, yeah. Yeah, they, they are just hardworking and I love it. You So keep it up. Thank you. Thanks so much. That's why I wanted all those voices in the house, those we kick out, those we retain, and those we just say, oh, we, we got to have a drink. So I will jump to my first speaker and introduce, introduce my speaker. So I will, I will read that one. So I got two speakers. One, I got Tapiwa Kamuruko. So Tapiwa Kamuruko is the head of the United Nations Volunteers Regional Office for Africa in Nairobi, Kenya. The United Nations Volunteers Regional Office works to strengthen partnerships, <clears throat> networking, and pro pro programmatic links with key partners in the region, including United Nations agencies, non-governmental organizations, member states, as well as regional economic communities. Prior to his recent appointment, Tapiwa was senior portfolio manager in the development division at the UNV headquarters in Bonn, Germany, with responsibilities for regional and global program and projects for Africa region. He was also chief for the Africa region between 2008 and 2010. Tapiwa brings solid expertise and experience in a range of areas relevant to the work of the United Nations systems, in, including over 17 years of program development and management covering policy analysis, poverty reduction strategies, good governance, environment <coughs> and post-conflict and recovery. In, two, in 2000, he worked for the United Nations Population Funds UNFPA, as an assistant representative in Zimbabwe. He moved to Uganda in 2003 as the team leader for a governance program at the United Nations Development Program, which supported human rights and the decentralization of program of the government. Tapiwa has been involved with the design of youth engagement strategies, such as youth volunteering and partnership programs. He has been involved in the setting up of the African Union Youth Volunteer Corps, as well as the ECOWAS Volunteer Program. Tapiwa Kamuruko holds a PhD in Communication for Development with interest on use on appropriate of new communication technology for development. So I welcome you, Tapiwa, to share with us something. So welcome. <clears throat> Thanks, Peter and uh... Good evening, everyone, and or good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending from where you are. Um, let me first disown the introduction. Uh, when Peter asked for a short bio, I thought he was going to descend this and only say a few things. Uh, and because I was so busy, just uh, send him what I, I and the next thing is. Uh, it's made me so transparent, translucent rather, that you can see through me. Anyway, look, um, the colleagues, the board members of the uh, Global Youth Forum, uh, um, the, <clears throat> the patron, especially Dr. Steve Foster, and um, the other board members, I would like to salute and thank you for this invitation. To this year's, it looks like you've invited me to a board meeting. I felt a bit uncomfortable when we were going through your the year's <coughs> progress. 
and mentioning that you had chucked out using very strong words. <laughs> I'm a board member of a number of organizations and we, 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 we don't, I mean, this is a youth forum. It's good that you are already practicing some kind of accountability leadership. Uh, so it's good that you use the language that you dropped some people or you terminated, you fired some people. Interesting stuff, interesting ways of governing. Uh, I've been asking to talk a little bit about uh, my volunteer program or my volunteer life, as well as a few things on youth development strategies. Look, um, I didn't want to prepare anything because when you are talking with young people, uh, uh, people like uh, Dr. Steve Foster and others who are my age, I'm around, I'm a few years before 60 now, maybe two, three. They will tell you that the youth of today, they don't want to be lectured. Some of them, they have a lot of information. We take it for granted, especially in the UN, we like producing well-phrased well statements and talk on them. And this is not my approach. I always want to engage, I always prefer conversations because that way you make it more relevant to the audience. In fact, here in Africa, they say, if you talk, you talk alone, but if you sing, you sing with everybody. So I want to make this a conversation. But uh, I find your theme of, rec of engage, recognize and reward for the, for the last board meeting, very, very interesting. More so for us, you and that we've just, uh, just last week celebrated and commemorated the International Volunteers Day. So I think this is very much in line with uh, your thinking, the way you plan, the way you do things. Um, <clears throat> yes, part of what Peter said about me, uh, he left the most interesting part when I was a volunteer. Uh, without being offensive to Karen or Dr. Steve, I was actually the first black, I come from Zimbabwe, I was the first black president of an organization called ZACRO because of my background, law and other stuff. ZACRO is an association similar to Prison Fellowship uh, International. Uh, the full name is Zimbabwe Association for Crime Prevention and the Rehabilitation of the Offender. It is a recognized organization by the government uh, basically, uh, we go and try to mitigate the living conditions, the way prisoners, whether they are on capital punishment, whatever they are, even when they are waiting to be, uh, to be sent to the gallows, as was the case then, to make sure that they are living well, they are treated humanely, their rights are not violated. So I took over as the first black president and this was on a voluntary basis. Uh, I served for three consecutive terms of four years, four years, four years. So I'd like to say to John, I'd like to say to the lady Val, that uh, in voluntary work, you are never fired. Because volunteerism is a spirit of solidarity. It's a self-motivation. It's something that comes from you as an individual. And sometimes because we do this over and above other things, we're living in a very difficult world. Probably uh, John, as he said, was unable to explain himself and Val. Probably the things that bring food to their table in terms of basic needs demanded that they put more effort there. So they were unable to commit to do what they were they had committed to do. So you should have asked them why they weren't able to perform. As John looks like, I mean, he worked throughout the year and almost towards the end, you terminated him. So I went for three consecutive terms as president of the Zimbabwe Association for Crime Prevention and the Rehabilitation of the Offender. Uh, when you look at uh, UNV globally, uh, we have uh, our, our tagline called Inspiration in Action. We believe that volunteers are driven by or volunteerism and the volunteers 
the front, the foot soldiers, the people who are the first responders when things happen, when action is needed, like Red Cross and, and other, the people who work with most vulnerable communities, who make a change when it's needed, who do this without an expectation of remuneration or rewards or payment. They do this from the bottom of their heart. Some even commit their own resources. I know that in Africa, when you say time is not calibrated in resources, we only start to see time, uh, resources when they are marked with dollar signs or with, uh, with euro sign or with pound sign, I don't know. But the time they give, it's interesting. Mm. When I moved to Uganda in 2000, I, I, <clears throat> I was team leader of a very big uh, program in Uganda. Uh, I had probably close to 100 staff members. Uh, 95 of them were volunteers. Some were based in Bondobujo, where one of the uh, colleagues here, is it Mohammed, is based. Some were based in, uh, in Fort Porto. Some were based in Guru. Some were based in Kampala. Some were based in Soroti, right across the country. And I only had the close, the close unit basically was about five people, the advisors. We moved the mountains for the first time in the history of the UN system in terms of human rights reporting. Uh, those who are familiar with governance in Africa uh, will agree with me that uh, in Africa it's not easy to, to produce a human rights report. And then you have government say, you can sleep in that country before you are PNG. <laughs> we managed to produce reports and provide capacity to uh, civil society organizations. We also did a lot of work in the areas of decentralized justice system in Uganda. They called uh, uh, local courts one and two in producing the manuals and so forth. The point I'm trying to raise here is I went with young men and women. Some were lawyers, some were development animators, some were social mobilizers, but they were all bound by one phenomenon, volunteering and volunteerism. So this animal we call volunteering, sometimes we, we talk about it without unpacking it. What is it exactly? Because we just say, oh, it's working without any expectations for rewards, it's no, it's volunteerism, is an, it's, sometimes it's not even cheap. For me, it's not cheap. Volunteerism is very expensive. If I'm giving you my time, like this evening, probably I should be parking my, puffing my, my whiskey or something. This is money. Volunteerism is, 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 is money. Volunteerism is time. When you see volunteers like yourself, Peter, and Damien there and Rogers, you are dedicating this time, you are devoting this time to a cause. And that element makes volunteerism unique. This is why what is done by volunteering is so binding. In development, this is where we are looking and trying to say it brings development effectiveness. Because what you do, because you are being paid, is like a consultant. Those who have done consultants work. You do it to finish and complete a project or a report and submit it and ask for your, your balance of pay, balance payment. But volunteering, because you associated yourself with a cause and you, 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 you rallied it until it got finished and with impact, it's so, so, you are so attached to it. This is where the difference is with any other mode of human resource management. And it's good to talk to young people like you because when you look to our situation in the global south, okay, the whole world, globally, I think we are talking about uh, 1.5 or so billion today of young people aged 15 to 24, the definition of UN, of youth. And 80% of them are in the global south. 80% Eight of, 80 of them are in the global south. And for Africa, it's even worse. When you look at this 
of these people, they have a number of issues. They are disproportionately disenfranchised in public spaces with skills, employability skills, social cohesion, participation, representation, you name it. In terms of empowerment, forget it. The moment they set up a forum like this, the next thing, some government somewhere might think they are a proxy of a political party, they are banned with foreign money. So young people, you know, we are going through a very difficult time and we are losing them. This is why we also find that young people like yourselves, if you are not given the space and time, you end up doing not devious, but other things that we will not want to talk about here because you are not given recognition. You are not recognized. You are not given the possibility even to develop your skills. We send you to school, but we don't give, give you the possibility to nurture these skills and, put, and, and use them productively, either in commerce and industry, either at the community level in development. We just give you education, we dub you somewhere. So I don't want to continue talking because I'm aging for political office very soon. Uh, I just wanted to say this few words, but allow us to have a conversation. As I said in Africa, if you sing, you sing alone. But if you, if you talk, you talk alone. But if you sing, you sing with everybody. Uh, time allowing, I, I, I would like to respond to specific issues. I've had the privilege of looking at, uh, look, checking up your, your organization, the Global Youth Forum, what you do and why you do what you do. Your motivation, your ambition, your vision, where you want to go. Yes, more organization, but what you want to do, uh, it's like a government, but that's the way to go. Don't minimize your thinking. Don't minimize your vision. Sincerely speaking, I'm very inspired. If you say uh, we managed to mobilize, we surpassed our expectations, we managed to raise 99 blah blah thousand uh, you got, uh, Kenya shillings, uh, which is somebody, maybe the UN elsewhere, it's 0, 0.0 something salary every month. And you celebrate that. Congratulations. Put your back on the back. That's the way to go. Because from that 1,000 US dollars that you have managed to raise, next time you are raising millions. And next time you are going to translate these millions into vision, into what you want to do and build that youth center. And that youth center is going to produce leaders. I've worked with the German, I lived in Germany for about 10 years. I worked with the uh, youth uh, sport for development, uh, uh, UN sport for development, office is based in, in Deutschland. And it's not about kicking the ball. It's not about running on the pitch. It's about bringing people, it's leadership, it's networking. That's one thing that we like, especially in the global south. When Trump and his people are in their golf places somewhere, they are networking. We don't do it here in Africa. Use that sports center to network, to exchange ideas, to share ideas, to cross pollinate. I wish I could go on and on. Uh, I'm usually invited to talk for two hours and above. Uh, but given that um, this is a board meeting and you are celebrating the work of volunteers and uh, you are encouraging each other, you are recognizing each other. You are lighting the, the, the flame so that you continue to be engaged. I want to stop here and possibly I'll get one or two questions that I'll uh, react to. But uh, let me once again, thank you, Peter, and thanks to Dr. Steve Foster and other board members who might not know, and also um, Karen, um, who have not met but i'm told you work for the boy scout boy scout is one of the organizations that i work with uh under the volunteer involving organization the uh, big 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 tent uh usually everybody who is doing something for a cause um uh, without being motivated by 
by returns. We welcome them in this. And this year, we have done wonders in Kenya, working with the girls, Girl Scouts. We have distributed a lot of stuff, especially those that um, the girl child uh, is, uh, is, is, is unable to, to get because of COVID. So we work with your organization and I applaud the vision and the mandate that your organization has set to do. Asadi Sana, thank you. And I look forward to engagement and to recognize as well as to reward by words your colleagues. Asadi. So let's give, let's give some, some love. Let's show some love, guys. Thanks so much. So Tapiwa, Tapiwa, I'm inspired. So we will do 15 more minutes because Tapiwa said he's running for political office and he had to take some more minutes. So we are just pushing, pushing another 15 minutes because Tapiwa was a politician a little bit, but I think you guys get where he's coming from. And you get exactly how the small wins can make you like, people can see what you are doing. It, it, it doesn't have to be the elephant. So let me jump down and introduce a friend. I did not have his, his dad, but there is a mutual friend who connected us, and that is Dr. Foster. So we met, I met Kieran sometime in 2013, approximately one year before I graduate. And I was invited to volunteer in this particular international scout event. And there we were nine, we were 10, 10 volunteers. So just like you mentioned, there are a lot of issues in Africa. When other volunteers were asleep, I was awake trying to help ensure that Moya and team, they were having water and having all these things properly sorted. Toilets were clean and all that. So I did just play my part and Kieran happened to, to have been a good friend. So my first visit to UK, he picked me from the airport. So he looked after me, he took me in their home, uh, he gave me a bed, he, he took me to everywhere I wanted to go. So when we do this, we do these things and we, we always meet once every month just to catch up and to do a number of things. So I told him about this and I said, Moya, now you are now a big man being the vice chair of all this and you are now growing and you are soon becoming the president of the UK. Can you come down and inspire young people? So Moya, jump down and give us the, uh, the talk. And remember not to be a politician as well. <laughs> uh, thank you, Peter. And I, um... I don't uh, wish to be the president of the UK. I'd have to remove the Queen to do that, and I think that'd be a bit tricky. So uh, I, I, I'll just put that on the table here. Um, look, thank you uh, very much uh, um, for inviting me along. Uh, nice to see you again, uh, Zachary, uh, as patron, and also uh, other board members and colleagues. It's uh, it's great to be here with people who are passionate and interested and driven and committed to uh, to change and developing and to. Uh, putting young people front and centre. I, I applaud that and it's a big part of what I do uh, in the UK. I think I mean, what an intriguing uh, meeting you're having. I've never been to, uh, uh, like uh, as Tapua said, you know, I've been, uh, sit on other boards uh, as well as the board for the Scouts, which I'll get to. Um, I, I, I don't think I've ever seen such uh, accountability on, on display. Uh, I think it's brave um, and I, I think it's interesting uh it's very it's it, it's easy to stand up and say the things that you've done well and say look how, how far we've come and, and look at what i've achieved it's a damn sight harder to stand up and say i got that that bit wrong uh and then account for it on a zoom call with lots of different people so you know um uh val john i applaud i applaud that uh, doc even i applaud that um that honesty and that ability to do that i think it's superb um but remember, saintliness is not a prerequisite for dignity. And I think <laughs> kindness, uh, leadership is about being firm sometimes. And it is about saying uh, we didn't get this right. But it's also about doing it in a way that's kind and, uh, and caring. So it uh, would be my reflection. But immensely impressive uh, people are, that I've heard from already. Um, I think you asked me, Peter, just to reflect on uh, some of the things that are my journey, I suppose and some of perhaps what's going on in the UK. Um, I think, uh, I mean, so I am vice chair of the board for the Scout Association in the UK, which um, we, so our, 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 whole, uh, uh, our whole gig is about giving young people skills for life. So we're all about giving young people the skills they need to succeed in the future. And that's, that's always been what Scouting was about since it was set up 
uh, by Baden Powell uh, in 1907. And uh, we're, it's no different now. It's about taking young people. It's about giving them the opportunity to thrive and grow and learn new skills. It's one of the things that Roger was talking about earlier around, you know, uh, communication and leadership and teamwork and uh, uh, productivity and project management and all these things that make you successful in later life are things that we're taking you know, thousands and thousands of young people through uh, every every night of the week. Uh, somewhere in the UK and somewhere uh, in the world and I remain immensely proud of that uh, and the impact that that has on people. Um, so it is a real pleasure and privilege to volunteer for, for the Scouts and uh, to be the youngest uh, vice chair they've ever had which I tell you is not without its challenges. Every day is a learning day for me still uh, and I, I, always, I always reflect on when I when I became vice chair when I go into a meeting when I when I look at something or get a paper or, or do something I've all, I'm always talking to these to these people, these giants, you know, they're, they're with all of this experience and, and life behind them. And they're doing things that they've done for years and years and years. And sometimes I'm still, I'm 20, 27, I'm still doing things for the same time, for the first time. And so, you know, um, it's a real challenge, but it's been a, a real pleasure and a real experience. I'm in my final year now as trustee uh, on the board of the Scouts. I've been doing that for six years. Um, this has been one of the most challenging years I think in uh, living memory uh, and it's touched people across the world in different ways it's been a really unequal experience for people so I was reflecting on this just yesterday with my team at work um, COVID has hit us in it with uh, such difference so whether you had lived in a house with a garden or a one-bedroom flat whether you had a, a job in retail and you were made redundant or whether you had a secure job in uh, in public services like a firefighter or, or you drove an ambulance. Everybody has experienced this so differently. Uh, and I'm grateful to volunteers like yourselves who've carried on and pushed through. I think that's to be applauded. Um, professionally, I'm, I, I work for a fire and rescue service. So I head up a, a, a department for one of the largest uh, fire and rescue services in Europe, Essex Fire and Rescue, uh, and I manage risk. So my job, when I went into risk management, so it's public risk management, uh, you go into public risk management in the UK thinking that it's, you know, what, what can really happen? We don't really have many hurricanes. We don't have many disasters. There aren't, uh, there's not a great deal of kind of famine, things like that. So it's traditionally quite a quiet job. Uh, and then COVID hit and it was like, I didn't, you know, what, what's this? I thought I was going to get an easy ride. Um, but and it's been an immensely difficult year. Uh, but there's some things, some real things that we've, I think, um, we've really learned. Uh, as we've gone through and I'll touch on some of those uh, in just a moment but I think one of the things I would say is that during this pandemic it's really shown us uh, people who, who what makes somebody a, a real team player and who you want on your team so it's fascinating I've had some some uh, people who have been the most helpful during this year some people that work for me who've been the most uh, successful and driven uh, and when you look into it, they're, they're people with backgrounds in volunteering. They're the people that have been through the Scouts. They were sea cadets. They were girl guides. They were uh, helped. They were volunteering for the UN. They were doing things that added extra skill sets and committing time to developing themselves outside of their everyday work. And those are the people that were best prepared to help us during these, these, this challenging year. Um, and, uh, you know, give me, give me a team of five Scouts any day over a team of... Uh, uh, civil servants <laughs> no offense for anyone's a civil servant here but you know I, I just the, their ability to get stuff done to plan and to get stuck in uh, is truly uh, remarkable and without some of those people this year I, I, I would not have been half as effective uh, as I have been um, what you do in Global Youth Forum is really close to my heart so back in uh, well a couple of years ago now about three four years we ran a program called I Move It in the UK and we took groups of um, well, about 18 to sort of 24 uh, young people um, and we took them through a weekend long program and we taught them things like problem solving and debating and uh, leadership skills over the course of a really intense weekend and then we added on a six month kind of mentoring program afterwards and we did that in every region in the UK so uh, we run I think we did 30 uh, courses over the over the three years and we developed a pool of young people all over the UK who were uh, who had support in achieving their ambitions. We, we made them kind of plan and, and plan about the things they wanted to achieve. Um, and then we supported them to deliver those plans. And 80% of them went on to take on a role in scouting uh, that was either a higher responsibility role 
uh, or was a role that they wouldn't we wouldn't traditionally expect to see a young person in and the whole aim of the program was to uh, was to inject was to inject young people into positions into spaces where perhaps they weren't before boards uh, leadership roles slts in districts and counties and with it and it had immense success uh, and it's something i'm really proud of but i see i see so much of that reflected here uh, and that ambition and that um drive for results and, and to you know really improve the uh, young people's experiences um so you know if i can offer any any advice or guidance peter you know yeah, you know where i am um i think three things i'll just finish with um i the what have we sort of through my journey uh to where i am today in terms of the things that uh i've done on the way to vice chair of the board i think there's three things i'd leave you with one is um keep reaching and keep stretching so sometimes you sometimes you you reach and you miss uh and you don't succeed and you get things wrong and maybe you get like <laughs> uh, fascinating terminology you get terminated uh fired whatever you want to call it uh you leave uh because things don't go to plan but you never really i, I always think of it like if you if you uh run over the horizon and it's not what you expected you never really come all the way back because you learn stuff on the way and it's all all of it is a journey where you you pick up different experiences so whether you succeeded or not whether you made it to the end of the race whether you were fired right at the final hurdle you've learned something through that experience and it's the stretching it's the stretching that will help you grow and help you develop and be a better a better person you will always build it the second better the second time around so i think uh keep keep taking on opportunities that stretch you and that worry you because success sometimes feels uncomfortable on the journey second thing is uh somebody has already said it. i think roger touched on it uh, small groups can change the world i always think uh, i had an absolute fascination with the russian revolution i don't know if anybody knows anything about it but um i studied it for a long long time um it, that's a, a great example of how a very small group of people can make a huge change and a huge difference not necessarily positive but uh, an enormous change to the way the world worked for, for many, 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 many years. And if you surround yourself with passionate, talented people and you look after each other and you are honest with each other and you've got a clear plan, uh, you can punch way, way, way above your weight. And I think that's what Global Youth Forum is doing, as Tapua said, you know, just to echo some of that, keep being ambitious uh, and keep that small, small group of, of dedicated, committed people with a clear plan and you can't go far wrong. And then the third one is your job, I think, as young people, I, I hate to break it to you, is to lead. Uh, we need leaders. Uh, the world needs leaders more now than they probably than we ever have, um, because things are so uncertain. And your job is, is twofold, really, as a leader, I think. Uh, firstly, it's to get things done. I mean, let's not be let's not beat around the bush about it. You know, if you're leading or managing people, your job is to get stuff done. If you don't get stuff done, you're not you're not managing properly. So. Um, it's about being proactive and, and getting the job done. But crucially, it's about how you do that. It's about doing it in a way that is kind and a way that is positive and a way that respects people around you. Because uh, we often celebrate people who, who achieve great results and they, they change organizations and we, we turn the ship around and we, we make it to the, to the goals that we wanted to at the end. But if the course of the journey to get there is littered with casualties, if you've lost 90% of your friends and the organization, then you've not made a success and the cost maybe was too high. So I think my reflection would be think yes about what about the things you want to do, but not at the expense of how you want to do them. I think that, you know, that's so important. Um, so, I mean, uh, I genuinely believe in the power of uh, young people uh, to change the world around them, to create a better world uh, than the one that they found than the one that you found and inherited. Um, it's, a, it's what I've uh, dedicated my uh, young life so far to and expect to in the future. Um, and it's a real honor to, to be able to see Global Youth Forum having uh, changed and developed over the years um, since I first met Peter uh, in, in Kenya. A, 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 young, a young boy with, some, with what I thought at the time were ludicrous dreams. And look at where we are now. Uh, you know, really, really proud that you've uh, you've put some of those some of those big dreams that you were talking about on on a, a very dusty 
Nairobi uh, campsite to in, into some into some real you know uh, real reality. Uh, long may it continue. Um, and I think I'll leave it there. Thank you, Peter. You're on mute, Peter. We, we, we forget this stuff. So I was just saying, let me thank Moya and Tapiwa for creating time and Daktari for also creating time. Guys, we will do a little bit more of time. Uh, just allow me because for me, this is important. So if we do another 30 minutes to allow you guys to ask questions and engage, that will be okay for me. So if you could allow me just a few more minutes, um, I will be very, uh, very grateful. So Kieron and Tapiwa and Daktari and all of you that have managed to be here, you are that small percentage in the society that are keen to make the world. And I remember when Kieron was driving me in his car and he reflected, he told me about a lady in Obama campaign that one voice can change the world. And that song just continued like that. And that lady kept on singing. And then the crowd joined. That song still, re I remember like yesterday, still in Kieron's car and him telling me about the, the one lady who just sang and then the crowd joined. So I will now welcome down uh, a question. I know Rogers got a question on uh, UN. So Rogers, do you want to jump on? Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, okay, my question, yes, it's to Tapio. Uh, Okay, uh, it's just on. Are there uh, maybe are there um, are there uh, uh, volunteering policies or and frameworks uh, that that are there for volunteering uh, specifically here in Africa? And uh, if they are, uh, maybe you can shed some light on that and some of these policies and frameworks. Maybe I can, in the interest of time, maybe I can take a couple of questions. Okay, good. Thanks so much for that. There was a question for you, Tapiwa, and the lady is not there because the lady I met her, she, want, she wanted to work for the UN. And she, her question was, I'm trying to find her question. Her question was on the policy. So I here think was... I, I, I remember the question from Val. So the question was, there is one which says, how is UN volunteers program in Africa ensuring girls and women are given equal chances and opportunities in the program? And then, and then we got, okay. There is one coming saying, how best can I make the community society to volunteer in supporting quality education for su sustainable development? And then with that one for the policy, then there. Okay. I also have a question. Yes, yeah, well. for it, well. yeah I, I was asking, um, are there like activities uh, for United Nations volunteers that are day, um, that last for a day or maybe a week? Because a lot of the activities I've seen, you as a volunteer, you have to spend around six months and above to be able to actually complete the whole program. So are there programs that are actually, you know, short programs that you can engage as a volunteer? Thanks, Val. All right, let me quickly go through these uh, few questions. One about policies. Uh, <clears throat> you had the introduction, my introduction, my bio from, um, by, by Omondi. Um, in other circles, they call me the father of volunteering, even if I'm right to VR, because I've worked with, Africa is 54 countries. So of the 54 countries, um, we have 31 countries that have elaborated either a volunteer policy either in a law like here in Kenya, Mozambique and other countries, then I, uh, some have come up with schemes, uh, some have come with programs, some have come with youth uh, volunteering strategies. So 31 countries have elaborated one way or the other uh, some kind of an arrangement 
um, in order to create an enabling environment for volunteering, uh, volunteering for everybody um, in five or six categories from youth volunteering, diaspora volunteer, retiree volunteering, uh, professional association volunteer, you know, all kind of volunteers, including diaspora volunteering and a program called Talk 10, the transfer of um, expatriate skills to uh, their countries of origin. So yes, um, we, we have been for supporting volunteer policies in Africa, but it's one thing to have a volunteer policy. And it's another that we have that volunteer policy supported by action by national government. And it's another thing to have that volunteer policy uh, being implemented. I can tell you a country in Africa, not very far from where I'm sitting. We supported them to come up with a volunteer policy in 2020, 2012. But up to now, uh, national development plans and implementation, they don't make any reference to this policy. You know what it means? It's just there, it's a desk. It's a shelf document. So we get worried. I mean, it's, sometimes they use this for resource mobilization. But they, there are no action plans that face to uh, the very good and well-intended purpose of this uh, policy, or how it will be used deliberately or intentionally uh, as part of uh, development strategies. No. Uh, shorter periods for uh, volunteering uh, for a week, for a day. Unfortunately for UN, no. Because most UN volunteers are attached to programs of partners, could be UNICEF. You know, projects are for a long period, like six months, six years, four years, three years. So when we get volunteers to support our partners' programs and projects, they want some sustainability, human resource arrangement in the form of volunteers. This is why it is difficult because the, the UN volunteers are a bit different from other volunteer organizations, like VSO, like Red Cross, JICA, COICA, and et cetera. Um, UN volunteers, it's more or less as if they are staff members of an organization to which they are attached. For example, when you are talking about international volunteers, they might be coming from UK, from America, from all over, to bring them in, to settle them. Uh, all that involves a lot of costs. So, the minimum we, we, we talk about here is about six months. It's cost effective in terms of placing a per somebody and also to be effective on the assignment. The first three months or so, you are, you are still settling. Then after that, you start making some impact and then you continue with the momentum to, to, for impact and results. So one week is a bit too short or, or a day. So the UN program, UNV program is very particular with, uh, in terms of 50-50 opportunities, in terms of gender and uh, right now as I'm talking, um, the number of UN volunteers throughout the world, whether they are national volunteers, we run two categories, national and international. We are close to 8,000. And we are very happy to report that we have reached the 50-50 gender parity in terms of number of women and number of men who are serving the UN program. However, the numbers are fluid. I'll tell you why. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult. Some duty stations are difficult. Imagine Val, you are a mother and you are expecting. We can't send you to a mission as a volunteer with MUNUSCO in the middle of uh, maybe in, 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 in South Sudan or in, in in Somalia or in DRC or in, or in Mali, it's a bit difficult. I'm saying we are fine, but there are certain gender um, restrictions that are there. You cannot, as my wife, I would say no. But otherwise, as a professional, I want to go there in the middle of things and do something. So this is where we are. But right now, as I'm talking, we are almost, in fact, it's 51 to 49. 51 ladies, 51 women, and 49 men. And we, we celebrated this about, I think three months ago in the middle of COVID. Uh, in terms of uh, community volunteering and impact, um, the study that we have done is that is, is confirmed that uh, 
volunteering. Uh, in fact, uh, seventy percent of volunteering is informal, is at the community level. Only thirty percent is the form of volunteers where you see people they are attached to organizations for two, three, four years, or you see VSO uh, with these volunteers coming from wherever or UK coming to Africa or going to Asia and Pacific or Latin America, wherever. But uh, seventy percent of volunteering is at the community level, and when it is at the community level, that's where development is needed most. That's where results are needed in development most. That's where the 17 goals of the SDGs matters most than anywhere else. Not at the big ivory towers of offices, where bureaucrats will talk and talk and go for, for, for tea and talk and talk, go for lunch, talk and talk, and then they take their, their jackets and go home. The day is done. But the volunteer at the community level will persevere with, with the community where they are working to drill a hole, a, a ball, or to make a deep well, or to help construct a bathroom, a toilet, or to construct a house for people. So, or to teach, like in Kigali, outside Kigali today, we have a number of volunteers who are teaching. You know, noting that, I mean, Kigali is switching from French, or now it's French and English. So they're teaching English. So that's where it matters most. Uh, which other question? I think I've had, oh, those who want to join UNV, um, you see, um, there, is a, there is a perception about volunteering. The other time I was in, in Swaziland, the country now called Eswatini, um, in, in some, somewhere there in next to South Africa. And I had, I had lunch with the Minister of Economic Development. And then he said, Shapua, what is the definition of, of volunteering? Then I said, look, this is somebody who is offering skills, service, like the Rotarians, service above self. Somebody who is doing so much work without any expectations. And when I'm talking about this uh, honorable minister, I'm talking about somebody who ranges from neurosurgeons. I've been managing doctors myself in Lipopo, South Africa, in Malawi in Trinidad and Tobacco, doctors, neurosurgeons, who are volunteers, right across to a, to a pump attendant in DRC, who is pouring fuel for the gas. These are volunteers. But in Switzerland, the definition is Ukushesha. Ukushesha is somebody who is idle, who is not doing anything, okay? So there is this perception that volunteers are people who are idle, who are not qualified, who have no skills, who are just loitering, loitering. no. Uh, I did volunteering work when I already had a PhD. Okay? So, for, so UN is a bit very strict on that. The people who volunteer either as national volunteers have to have some skills, have to have some professional orientation. By this I mean maybe a first degree with so many experience, second degree, so many experience, PhD, so many experience. So that when they are working with partners, they are as competent as anybody else within that organization. So if you want to be a volunteer, you can go on the uh, WW uh, UN Volunteers Program and how to become a volunteer. You register there, then you register your profile, then you'll be given a professional category, and then you can pick as and when your professional uh, profile matches with a request for assignment anywhere in the world, particularly starting at country level. I stop there. Thanks yeah. so much, Tapiwa. That was another 10 minutes. So thanks so much for, we are giving you time so that these young people in here who want to go to UN and they want to do big things, they get a clear picture. And that's why I managed to get you. I know this would have been a lot of money and we will not have afforded. So thanks so much. I know Damini got a question for Kieron, but I think through Kieron's speech, the question has been answered. So let me jump to Siraji. Siraji, can you ask your question really quick? Siraji is from Uganda. So I got a few people from Uganda. Siraji, yes, just um, go for it. Uh, yes, um, yes, thank you, Peter. I think... Uh, uh, just like you've told the team, my name is Raj from Uganda in the western part of where uh, I think uh, 
Tapi was been talking about the sides of Bundivujo uh, uh, Fort Potro. Uh, my question was um, actually I was more interested in uh, looking at the SDGs that every country is really focused at. And in reference to zero hunger, I wanted to know which direct programs, uh, direct community empowerment measures are in place to support the youth, strengthen the abilities to fight uh, hunger within their communities. Which measures are there to see that uh, the communities, the young people are really empowered within their localities to make sure that we are fought uh, the, the hunger, especially in Africa. Okay, so I will allow you to think about that one and then um, mine, will, mine will, will, will come to your question, Siraji, unless Tapiwa, you want to jump on for like say a minute or so. Oh, very quickly, um, uh, Sebo, uh, thanks for that <laughs> question. No, um, the, the difference. I don't know whether you know the um, the, the MDGs. The difference between the MDGs and the SDGs is that the MDGs at some point were, si were in silos, were implemented in silos. This is why the report, the evaluation report, noted that they were not very effective. This is why it was even difficult for member states and countries to achieve the targets that had been set. The SDGs are a bit different. The SDGs are being implemented in an integrated approach. If you want to end zero hunger, you cannot just go to the um, to SDG six or seven for um, uh, zero hunger without looking at SDG one, four, five, or even seven. This is how they are integrated. You have to inter. You have to address. The, the other issues, because they are all being implemented together. You cannot inter, um, implement one and think you'll be able to achieve uh, zero hunger without addressing issues yes. of education, issues of decent employment, issues of uh, mm. you know, of health, well-being, and so on. You want to address them collectively in order to reach there. In terms of uh, programs in Africa to address, you know, Africa, and uh, many countries, member states, they are not short of very good policies, by the way. I've worked in the government before, and I've worked with the government in many countries of the region. And when you go there and you think, you imagine that you are introducing something different, from nowhere, you find the minister or the permanent secretary or the government bureaucrat say, no, we have this document, we have another one, we have another one on the same thing that we are talking about, okay? So there are so many very good policies that were actually funded by donors to be put in place, but they have not been implemented. In most cases, the resources have not been allocated to implement even small, small projects. That matters most to people's lives. This is where the problem is. So I cannot single out what can we do for women, for, for, for young people, uh, in order to, to end hunger in Africa or elsewhere. I, I don't know whether you know of a program called uh, Youth Connect that is championed by Mr. Kagame in Rwanda. You know, the way they talk, the passion is, is done every year in October, except, year because, except this year because of COVID. It brings together a number of heads of state and everybody. I've... I've, I've, I've been privileged to, to work with Kagame and I've been there many times. Last year, if you go on the internet, you see me, I was sitting with Kagame, sitting with, with Jack Ma, with all these people addressing issues of youth. But at the end of the day, it is the, the priorities. The priorities for most countries in Africa, they are square. They are not facing in one direction. They are facing four directions like a square. You cannot say the square is going this way. Four sides are equal. Yeah. This is where the where the problem. Yeah. Thanks so much, Tapiwa. So, Kieron, the minute you want to ask Kieron that question, uh, because I think it's uh, so. What we will do, the minute you will ask Kieron, Kieron, you will ask Tapiwa a question. Tapiwa will ask you. Then we go to the awards and we go home. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. 
Okay, so Karen, my question to you is, you said you're just a young person, 27 years old. So how did you make it to the vice chair of the largest youth movement in UK? Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I think, well, I think there's a, there's a little bit of, um, let's marshal myself. There's probably a couple of things. So I think first thing is, uh, yeah, I took opportunities when they arose. So I remember, um, I sat, I went in, I was in a, a conference and I sat down next to, uh, this chap, uh, for lunch. And I, and I remember saying to him, um, <laughs> you know, we should really have some more young people at senior levels in the organization. You could do with a bit more of that, I think. Don't you agree? And he, he said, yes, yes, I agree. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. And we had chat, 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 chat. And then right at the end, uh, I shook his hand. So, okay, right. Well, I'll, I'll see you later then and we'll go. And I, I said, by the way, I didn't catch your name. And he said, yeah, I'm, uh, it was Mark Tarry actually at the time. I said, my name's Mark Tarry. I'm the uh, deputy uh, UK commissioner for, for the UK. I had no idea I was talking to him about that. So what was a candid and polite conversation turned out to be talking to the right person at the right time. So there's a little bit there in terms of luck. So it is, there's always a little bit of luck, the right place, right time. Um, a lot of, I think, hard work so, and listening. So I think I've always, uh, I'm really interested in people and how pe other people get to the places they've got to. And I like to hear, so, you know, this is a, a fantastic opportunity to listen to you, uh, to pour around your career and the things that you're doing, because uh, that's how you learn. You learn and you, by not mimicking, but by listening to what other people have achieved and then by taking those things on board and using them to kind of um, think through how you'll approach certain situations. So uh, a lot of kind of listening and learning. And then I think the final one is probably you've just got to be ambitious, I think. And my, I always, I want to make a difference to the things that I care about. I care about young people and I care about uh, their development. I care about uh, improving things in the UK for people who aren't as fortunate. And uh, therefore when opportunities arise, I have put my name forward and applied for them because uh, why not? And, and that's the only way you're going to do it. The only way, the only way you, you win the game is to play it, right? So, and sometimes you're not, you know, I'm not the most intelligent person around the board table. I'm not the best leader. I'm not the most qualified. I know that. That's fine. But uh, I've got just enough skill to play the game. And if I can learn on the go, then uh, I can make a difference. So I think that's just the other one. I'd perhaps call it madness or... or um, uh, or maybe opportunism, whatever you want to call it, but it's, you see an opportunity and I think you go for it. And that's what I've done uh, and will continue to do, hopefully, <laughs> for many years. Good, thanks All so right. much. So Namini is happy. Probably she's kicking me out of CEO, so she will try again <laughs> next year. So I will still be the fundraising manager. So Kieron, do you have a question for Tapiwa? Yeah, I think for one of the... Um, so the, in the UK, we uh, there's lots of volunteering opportunities, uh, but also lots of challenges, I think, to getting more people involved in volunteering. So I just wondered what your thoughts were on what the kind of um, two or three biggest challenges facing kind of, I suppose, the volunteering sector or volunteering in Africa are today. I'll, I'll be quick. Thanks for the question. Uh, I don't know how old you were around the 1986. 1986 was the last doing my masters in in UK, and at this time, um, I, I remember the BT was trying to change people's attitudes, and one of the billboard said, "Why can't we change the way we work?" I don't know whether they remember that. I don't know how old you were in 1986. I think um, in, in volunteering, there are issues of attitudes, okay? Um, there are expectations. I'll, give, I'll, tell, I'll explain this a little bit. I know notwithstanding that we are time bad, but it's important when we meet to share. Um, and also there are issues of uh, policies that are not implemented. Attitudes and expectations. You know, in Africa, when I send Rogers, John, Amina, Betty, uh, Val, or Hamid, or Damien to school, we expect them to finish university and they go 
and 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 any big money it's like an investment and when val all of a sudden goes home and said mama i found a volunteer opportunity and if if you say volunteer in english it sounds better if you say it in local language uh, my friend your parents will look at you on the face and said bloody hell what are you talking about you to go and do a job in a nice office and do this so that perception and so forth so the expectations to be a successful volunteer is is a bit tough but for young people the last point for young people there is a thin line unfortunately between volunteering and employment uh, many people think uh, especially those who joined the UN volunteer program they think it's employment when i tell them that no you are not employed you are just a volunteer you are going to receive a volunteer living allowance uh, your entitlements are limited to this they get surprised but bloody hell look uh, sorry to use this language i'm working with this guy same qualification same experience but is a p4 p1 professional categories of the un so those expectations and the attitude this is why we keep on like coca cola coca cola has been there for many years if you give money somebody to buy a soda they all they ask you say buy a coca cola they buy a coke even if they drink so uh, fanta or some coca cola continues to advertise as un we continue to do advocacy to build the sense of volunteering to bring out the solidarity to bring out the human aspect of volunteering and to enlarge volunteering as a resource as a capital that can be used in development this is where the problem the understanding is how can we conceptualize in fact right now we are running on a new theme of reimagining volunteering for the sdgs and i've been working uh peter oteri in your own times that I, i'm actually leading efforts in africa to see what member states can do to change the way you know when you talk about volunteering here in kenya they will say ah our forefathers have been volunteering at time immemorial so what has come out of that we want to change the narrative so uh to, to answer i think it has to do with the attitude expectations as well as policy environment because sometimes volunteers volunteers they need protection they need to be recognized they need security they need to be facilitated without this it's not possible as i'm talking to today 50 volunteers on the front line who are clinical people who are nurses right there for how would they go there if they are not facilitated so and also institutions that can like yourself uh with the boy scout where you can take volunteers and then direct them to a course direct them on assignments that are needed that can make difference to people's lives thanks uh, uh carol thanks so much so val you got a question so i will do two more questions and then we move on uh, i think the more time we have <laughs> The more you guys will get knowledge to take you through to 2021. So for me, I can be here whole night. So uh, Val, jump on with your question. Ask Moya, and then Tapiwa, you will ask Kieran a question as well. Doctor, we have you reserved for the end. So keep your keep your points coming. Okay. So Val, jump on. Ah uh, yeah. So my question is, um, Mr. Moya has said that you know, you, when you're dealing with the youth, you have to balance between kindness and also making sure that the work is done. So in my own experience, I've had to deal with a lot of youth. And I, I can say one of the things that is a bit of a problem is maintaining their consistency in terms of, you know, been making sure they get the message that they have to do their jobs and also telling them in a way that they don't feel to attack them so i'd like to hear your you know it's a good, it's a good question and it's a challenge i think that's uh 
So maybe it's a, it's not just about young people. Uh, I think it's a it's a about managing people generally. I think that's a challenge with it. With all, I have that challenge at work with people that work for me and uh, every day of the week. Um, so uh, you know, take some reassurance in that. It's it, it's nothing new, and people struggle with this. I think um, I think one of the first thing you need to do is if somebody if you're not getting what you want out of a situation or somebody's not achieving. Uh, you have to ask the question why and it's no good you sitting there asking that question yourself that you have to ask they have to engage with them and understand what you know why is it that this isn't happening or hasn't happened in the time scales you agree and sometimes there will be reasons for that I remember talking to uh, a uh, I, w I was giving some advice to a, to a senior leadership team for a district scout district in the UK and we were talking about why one of their senior leadership team members never made the meeting and we were uh, unpicking it and unpacking it why is this why is this and as it turned out she was a single mum and she had a young daughter and a young son at home and uh, the meetings they were holding were always at uh, half past five to half past eight uh, in the evening and what they were effectively asking her to do was volunteer her time to be on this SLT uh, in order to do that she had to make a decision did she attend the SLT meeting or did she feed her kids or, or did she put them to bed later and then impact their schooling day so it wasn't they were you were the game was being set up against her in a sense so the solution to that was to move the meeting you know nobody else had young kids come on they, you they could move the meeting so they moved the meeting uh to the morning on a saturday and that allowed her to attend and bring her whole self to the to the job so there's something about saying asking why that that person's underachieving and then what can you do to make to, to make the playing field better for them so can you uh can they do the work at a different time of day do you uh lengthen the um deadlines in order to, to to make sure that they're able to meet them or do you shorten them because actually they respond better to short deadlines because if you say kieran your deadline is in uh six months time yes gone i've forgotten about that i've gone to the pub six times since then you know so i think there's there's something about understanding why and trying to uh, you know change the way they work i think the other the other thing there is uh, or there's two more things so and i will be quick peter so the uh, the second one is um clarity so i think a good manager is clear about expectations i always used to say uh to uh, or i say to people that work for me I, i'll tell you i'll say this twice and the third time i'll do it so you you know uh, i want this on on this deadline uh, you've not met the deadline i want this by this deadline and the third time then there'll be there's a problem we have a problem so we need to do something about it i think uh sometimes people forget you know people are human they forget things they do things wrong they make mistakes that's life but if you don't give them the chance to correct it then they don't learn anything and neither do you so i think i usually go by the rule of i'll tell you twice and the third time i'm going to do it uh, or take it off you or there'll be a consequence but you have to be clear about the consequence i think it would be my advice um and then the third thing I think is, how do you do it with kindness? I think, I, I tend to think of, uh, when you go into a meeting with someone, how do you want them to feel when they leave a room? So if you call somebody in to have a conversation about a piece of work or, and doing something, or uh, you know, think about how do you want them to feel when they walk out of the door? Not, not what do you want out of that? What do you want in terms of outcomes? How do you want them to feel? Because if they leave the room feeling down and dejected and sad and miserable and they don't like you very much, they're probably not going to work very hard for you in order to get the job done. If they leave feeling like they've had a bit of a slap on the wrist and like they get it, but you were kind and reasonable and they feel like there's still a chance to, to get back in, in your good books or there's still a chance to get that piece of work done, you'll get a damn sight more out of them. So I think I would always say, think about how you want them to feel because uh, very rarely does a manager say, I want somebody to feel sad and lonely and upset. Uh, they'll usually say, I want them to feel like they've got something wrong, but they want to you know, go on and achieve something. And then you can think about how you do that and how you phrase that conversation. Um, so I think, yeah, that that that'd probably be the third thing. Very practical, I know, as, as, as a response, but hopefully that, that answers the question. Good. Uh, thanks so much, Moya. Tapiwa, do you have a question for Moya? So we end with your question for Kieron, and then we go to our words and finish with our closing remarks from Patron. Uh, uh, to be honest, I am not sure, but maybe a very selfish question to Carol. Um, I mean, given the different socio-economic political um, 
context uh, of different countries and regions. Do you think governments have a role to play uh, in volunteering, either in policy or supporting the programs through funding? Um, oh, good question. Do I think governments have a, have a role to play? Uh, yes, I absolutely think they've, they've got a role to play. So I think um, I can only draw on my, my background uh, from a kind of UK or European perspective. I think governments have a responsibility to um, uh, prov pr provide the platforms for us to do the best that we can or uh, you know, to, to, to provide the playing field and the inspiration. I think one of the things that uh, government does well in the UK is... Um, provides networking and sharing opportunities. So there, there's a kind of, um, we provide the space for charities to talk to each other and understand what, what people are doing and understand uh, you know, what positive outcomes and what opportunities there might be to collaborate. So for example, in tough times where we're financially hard up, the Scout Association have lost a lot of money this year. Are there opportunities to collaborate with the guides, with people like that, in order to save some money and, and be more efficient? And uh, I think there's definitely the space for kind of government with its its kind of um, view from the bridge, if you like, if that makes sense, this view from the bridge to kind of connect the pieces. Um, I also think there's a, a role for governments playing regulation. So we can't, there's something about saying you need, uh, you need a, an independent regulator to make sure that charities are doing the things they said they were going to do with the money that they're given. And that's really important. The public has to be able to trust uh, that charities and volunteers that, that use volunteers will use them fairly and use them for the things that they said they were going to do. So I think um, there's definitely a role there for, for a regulator. I suppose that <laughs> how effective the regulator is depends on the government and how effective the government is. But uh, we have uh, structures in the UK that mean we're held accountable as a volunteering organisation uh, for the things we promise. So, um, yeah, I do. I, and probably the third thing is sometimes there's a need to bring volunteers to bear in emergency situations. And we're doing a lot of work in the UK at the moment around what do we, how do we involve volunteers in emergency response? Because we don't do that at the moment in any kind of big way. And there's a, there's a need to have a really tight and consistent approach to that across the country. So I think the government has an absolute role to play in steering us through that and making sure we've got access to the funds and the information that, that we need. Um, so, so yeah, I think that yes is the answer. Good. Well, thank you so much for the elaboration. And I think Tapiwa is happy. If I, <laughs> if, if, if I don't allow Eliasi to ask a question, because he's itching somewhere, I know he will kill me. So that is the last one. Eliasi, jump on. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Peter, and uh, the rest. Thank you for giving me the, the chance last. I think I will be the last man standing for the question. Uh, first and foremost, I am hitting the question direct to Tapiwa. You know, I have been a volunteer for a couple of a long period of time under Uganda Red Cross Society. Now, we uh, came at a stage of uh, capacity building. And I know he's so far away about BOCA, that is about branch capacity, uh, capacity organization, but uh, in other way, it's capacity building. So uh, we have been following programs under the UN uh, capacity building for young people, whereby young people do apply uh, and then the vetting is done in Geneva. So my question is, you hardly find feedbacks coming back from such kind of applications. So it, uh, it doesn't give us an, uh, an insight of uh, what went wrong. So what are some of the challenges that is coming through such kind of a, a support which is, is supposed to come from the UN through in Geneva. Because uh, I have applied more than three times, I gave up. I, I, I think maybe someone is just trying to create that thing. I don't know. Thank, thanks. Um, quickly, uh, I, I believe that you have a roster number. Yes. Do you have a roster number? Roster number? Yes. Yeah, we are using the one for the organization. Ah, okay. Um, as much as we cannot discuss details here, but in 
I, I really don't know, but uh, one thing on the tip of mind is that when you apply, a hundred of you apply, maybe you have not been successful at this point in time, and I think it's, you are right that you may need to ask why you have not been, um, or why you have not been informed about the outcome of your application. I think it's important. But for you and me, uh, for example, when you are applying for something and we have a roster number, we owe it to every applicant to come back to you that at this point in time, you have not been successful, but we are going to return your name, your profile in the system. If we go for about two years, we even inform you that do you want us to maintain and keep your profile in our roster so that when something crops up that matches with your profile, then we can get in touch. Then you can renew your profile probably during the two, three years you have uh, gotten a new qualification and experience. But I cannot, I don't think I will be able to, to answer. And at the point is also as UN, uh, as a senior manager, I've seen people like at the UN who have volunteered for like four years, that's max, then you can give another five years on whoever. And I've always discouraged people to become professional volunteers. People who volunteer for all their lives. Uh, there are people who are working uh, like me, but are going to do volunteer work. Maybe that's what uh, others are doing. But there are people who want to be volunteers and earning a volunteer allowance for all their lives. We always discourage this. But uh, if there's an opportunity to, con to discuss uh, offline, bilaterally, I think I'll be very happy to get the details of your interest and why they have not responded to you. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for that. Thanks so much, Tapiwa. Now we jump down to the awards. I think you guys, a lot have been said. I want you to pick what can serve you and leave those that can't serve you and put them to use. Now, jumping down to awards, Rogers is our volunteer of the year because he stayed to the end. He was there from the beginning. He, he did set his individual goals. And I'm, I'm sure we've also learned we, we need to be, we need to be uh, kind to people, not kick people out. And Moya we will steal some ideas from you. So it happens that Rogers is our volunteer of the year and we can share some of his uh, achievements and he can be in touch. So in our appreciation, we got a special cup for him. And this cup will send him to Rogers. And in a way, we appreciate Rogers with that. That is uh, well designed for him. The minute you have Rogers cup, the minute got the cup. So the minute can just show us a picture of Rogers. So he can be drinking from that and we can give him that one. So with that cup, every time he drink, he thinks of volunteering because in it, it's something there together we are strong. So it's a cup like that. So that goes to Rogers. And then we got a certificate that will also go his way. So uh, we might, Tapiwa, who do you want to award? So we can send you one you sign, and then you can send it back to us and we can send it to him with your signature. That can be nice. And then Kieron, so Tapiwa, you will, you will sign Roger's certificate. And then Damini seems to be our exec of the year. So I was just there as a, as a, as, a, as a spectator. So Damini knocked me. I did score 500 and something. She did manage to score 617. So she did a good job. So we can give her some of that. And Damini's award, I got, I got a goodie bag with me. So in the goodie bag, um, I got that for her. And then I got something also in here. In here, I got I got that one for Damini as well. So she has been working extra hard. So we got that one as a word, and she, she will be drinking from that uh, and enjoying herself. So if you join, for me, I'm able to sit down and see young people win. For me, I don't, Tapiwa, we don't have to win. We got to give the young people opportunity to just keep doing their part and they support and they support. So those are some of the goodie bags. 
So, Moya, you will sign the Mimi's certificate, or you, you can sign that. And then we got corporate of the year. So corporate of the year means we can do a number of things. It doesn't have to be money. So exponentially happens to be our corporate of the year. So those are the things they did. And Kathy happens to be our board of trustee, although she's not there. So she, she linked us to a number of opportunities and introduced us to other partners, um, to other few people. So certificate will also go her way, and that's the corporate partner. So that's our list. Although Val, uh, value managed to be to the end, we will see what to do. I will buy you a chocolate. So I'm like you. We are not getting awarded because just like we play football, not all of us can be in the field. And a field can only accommodate 11 players or 22. But only one person can score a goal. So for us, we are taking a bench and we'll come back next year. And Tapiwa, for you, we want you to start thinking, how can we reward 70% of the informal volunteers who are not in the UN system, but they are still working to at least do something in the community. Jumping down to our glimpse of 2021, we already have a plan. And that's what makes us really proud. So we did that and we have our 2021 plan sorted. And now time to give a closing remarks from our patron. Patron, can you take, say three minutes to give us closing remarks? Unless somebody got a burning issue, and then we are good to go. Well, th thank you, Peter, for being so being so generous with 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 giving me three minutes. Um, so, for those who may have joined in later, good evening, everybody. Um, the overview, which is what you'd expect from the patron, I think few people could have foreseen COVID nineteen nor the colossal impact on national life that the pandemic would have in, in virtually every country in the world this past year and i think will do for some time to come we know here in kenya that, that many ngos and uh, cbo's community-based organizers have either ceased operations or have significantly scaled down their activities but GYF has quietly carried on, meeting the logistical challenges, overcoming obstacles, and turning problems into, into new opportunities. Now, this doesn't happen by magic. And so whether it's dedicated executive members, uh, some of the proactive trustees, and the corporates as, as stakeholders in youth empowerment, these other people, who have made all of this possible. Now, some have been recognized this evening and congratulations for that. But, you know, as is often said, everybody's a winner. And I think all of you participating this evening, whether it has been a, a success story or a three steps forward, then two back, everybody is a winner. And, and, and that's something that's, that's very important. But for all of you, um, and, and for those whom you represent in some cases, uh, you're all deserving of, of thanks and congratulations for, for staying with the G GYF dream. And certainly for volunteers who have fallen by the wayside, um, I really would encourage you to think again and to take the leap back into GYF. It's been said by Rogers and others this evening, if you're not prepared to put something in, then you're not going to get anything out. Now, as the chairman of the board, I'd already indicated to the executive recently that, that I really felt that it was time for me to step down. As I've served five years, um, which has been an exciting five years, not a jail term, I hasten to add, um, since the inception of GYF. But you see, as an individual who is retired, but not tired, um, I'm keen now that the, the board uh, be led by a younger person with, with a fully and inclusive contemporary awareness of the rapidly changing environment in which GYF 
uh, seeks to empower our youth. And obviously my commitment in, in the first three months of 2021 is, is, is to help to activate this. But as the patron, I look forward to providing ongoing encouragement for, for all that you do. And you know, the patron is expected to put his money where his mouth is. And so I was noting some figures as Domini was talking earlier. And I see that in terms of the objective being, being chased for the uh, total, for the community uh, sports center for this, this past year, and you raised 41,876 shillings, yes, I think. Well, I really think that ought to be 50,000 shillings. And so I will donate the missing 8,124 shillings as the patron, as a, a, as a prod to other trustees to put their money where their mouth is. Uh, call it guilt money if you like, but it'll help to achieve the obje obje objective there. So I encourage you all, as we come to the end of such an extraordinary year, to, to stay the course in either supporting or participating in the different empowerment activities that, that, that are so much a part of the GYF Kenya program and particularly this evening to Kieran it's really great to see you it's been too long man <laughs> and, you. and I, I hope I hope that we should talk again a uh, bit, 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 bit before long and Tapiwa meeting you for the first time sir it's an honor and a privilege and and I wish both of you continued success in 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 in, in what you're doing you know it's um it's when they it's when they punched you for the fourth time, you're allowed to think. Do you think they're trying to tell me something? You know. But when you're in the kind of leadership areas that you are, and I say this with the grey hairs carefully hidden under my earphones tonight, that's that that's when you just nod and smile and say, "I'm a slow learner. I've got my head down, and I'm keeping going." So there we go. So there's a lot to be done. And 2021 is just around the corner. So I, all I would say is may God bless you all, keep you safe, and remember, together we are one. Thank you so much and good night. Let's give, let's give Patron that. So it's now time to come on, turn your cameras on. Damini, Damini you sat there. Take the, the picture. That's it. That's how we do it. Everyone turn your camera on. The girls, I know you've been hiding. So turn your cameras on and off we go. Yeah. So till I see you guys soon, we will engage and probably have more of this session. So thanks so much. We did extra hours and I appreciate your time. I look forward to seeing you very soon. Bye, guys. Thank you, Pia. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, so much. God bless. Thank, Thank you. you. Stay safe. Yeah. So you can now just go home for me. I will watch you until everyone goes home. I'm taking you to your homes bit by bit. So people to go, go home. Watch your way away. Nadanganya. Ah, query. I got to end this meeting because people will stay here for long. So. I, I know Hamid doesn't leave meetings. Ahmed doesn't leave meetings. Moti is new. Nazreen can stay there till all night. Iliasi can be there the whole night. So, bye guys. And Tim, Tim Iliasi, I see you tomorrow for our last session. Okay. Bye.